I'm finally able to use my workshop mirror. Look at that. So then it looks like I'm further away and I can get a better shot. Well, it's been five years since I started my gender transition. I didn't make a video at four years because I have the same problem as I have now. I just don't think about my transition anymore. I kind of succeeded. I haven't been called by male pronouns in the longest time. I never asked anyone to call me by female pronouns. Not with words at least. I just became more feminine. And even, even at that, I'm still very tomboyish, so oh well. There's really not that much to talk about because there's no like specific things that have changed. I just feel like I'm growing up as a person. I'm not really transitioning anymore. And yeah, I just don't really have any issues. That mirror is kind of um, foggy, I guess. Oh well. It was worth the shot. So I just don't really have much to say about because well, I, I I don't feel trans. I feel like I've I transitioned. I'm done with that. Everyone holds me to the standards of female, so I don't really have much to say about transition anymore. It seemed to work. It was really easy. Well, it was easier once I knew what to do. And it was good because I had a good mental foundation of who I wanted to be. Because pretty much I just... I pretty much prototyped myself in 2011 and 2012 in Final Fantasy XIV as my character. <laughs> Renoa Leonhardt. And then I was like, okay, I really like being this character. I'm going to bring her to the real world through me. And so it helped me because I, I kind of prototyped, well, I made a, an effort to stop a lot of the bad habits that I had, the male, like, um, depression or whatever. The, well, the depression caused by my gender dysphoria. Because whenever I got to play Final Fantasy, that kind of melted away because I was able to present as a female and it just seemed to work better I still have the, the issues of like testosterone in my head because it really had a bad re reaction to, to that and um, it stopped me from pretty much growing up because as soon as puberty hit well male puberty was a real dud for me but female puberty really seemed to work really well it's like oh my god this actually works now whenever I think back 
um, that barrier between childhood memory and adult memory is somewhere around 23 or 24 years old, well, 22 or 23 years old. Before that, it's just all one big like blur of like random childhood memories, even though it was up until my 20s, I just hadn't really grown up mentally because I just wasn't compatible with male puberty. It was uh, unnatural for my, my brain architecture, if you will. But female puberty worked fine, and that's what I, I was finally able to grow up. Let's see. I do wish I, w I had the chance to start earlier, but honestly, it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, I've realized it's kind of pointless to continue, like, trying to do all these little things like these surgeries or whatever because at the end of the day i don't want to be a female human i want to be a female makote my makote so what i'm thinking is i'm pretty happy with myself right now definitely pretty happy with myself um or at least i'm not i don't hate myself as much as i nearly as much as i did but I think this is more than good enough for now until I, I, it, can, it can hold me over until I get old and Elon Musk makes his like Neuralink brain uh, ghost, in the, ghost in the shell interface thing where you can just take your brain and put an android body or I can just live in a virtual world. Either way, I figured there's no, there's no point in putting more effort into my body now when we should work on the technology to give ourselves android bodies or whatever, our own bodies, so we can be Makotes or Ellison or whatever. That's my thoughts on that. So, I am sorry that I don't really have anything to really say because the thing is, I just, I don't have any issues. I've never really had any, like, anybody in the real world upset at me for transitioning. Aside from my grandparents, but they're, 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 they're religious assholes. I've just them. That's fine. But sure, online people will throw insults all, all around, but that's online. That's just what happens online. But in the real world, especially in conservative America, people just don't give a shit. You know, like, the, the LGBT community really paints a bleak picture of, like, anywhere outside of San Francisco will just, like, like uh, cut your head off for being trans or whatever. But that's really not the case. Because like here in Southern Illinois, it's a pretty backwards place. Um, nobody cares. And I've actually noticed like, I think my transitions, I, I, I learned that my transition went, went pretty much completed when me mentioning I was trans brought up more confusion than helped answer questions because at a certain point around 2016 or 2017, um, maybe more like early 2018, whenever I would mention that I was trans, people would assume that I meant female to male. And they would ask me when I was gonna start transitioning. So then I had to like, no, nah, why did I bring that up? Because now I have to explain it's the other way. And I'm ready. So I, I just decided, I don't wanna be, I, I'm not gonna identify myself as trans because Everyone sees me as female, so I'll just go with that. And I didn't transition to be female. I just transitioned to be what I wanted to be, which was the more um, physical aspects. Like, a lot of people in the trans community have a very weird outlook on things where they want to be female, which they want to make, pe make people use female pronouns for them. I don't get that. How, how does words affect what you want? It seems like they're fake. It seems like they're drag queens. Because like a lot of the trans people, they seem to have views of women from the perspective of men. Like the whole thing like passing or whatever. Like what do you, I'm not passing. I'm just me. I mean, if I look female, I guess I am female. I'm not pretending. I'm not, I'm not really making an effort. I'm just myself. Sure, I make an effort to be a nicer version of me, but I'm not like trying to be female or whatever. Just the whole like wording, um, it's just it's just really weird, and it's obvious that a lot of things in the trans community are are, are just dudes pretending to be women because you meet trans uh, trans women, and it seems that a, a large majority of them 
they don't seem like women. I have female friends and there's a certain friendship there that I guess you could call female friendship. And I'm just kind of exception to that. But whenever, you know, because it's different when you have a, a guys and guys have different friendships. Men and women have different friendships. I don't have any relationships where it's like guy, guy friendship anymore because they see me as female. And so, yeah, I think, so I, that's like male friendship, universal friendship, and female friendship, I guess you could say. But you can obviously tell when someone's like male or female or kind of just like kind of in the middle, like a tomboy or a feminine guy or whatever. But you, you can kind of tell about that. And whenever you meet a lot of trans people, a lot of them just seem like guys that think that the entire being, uh, the entirety of what it means to be female is just to wear a dress and lipstick. And it's like, you're a creepy dude, I'm sorry. I've always rejected those standards. Like, you see that, on, like, a lot of the trans community just likes to talk about, like, how to look feminine. It's like drag queen helpline or whatever. It doesn't really, they don't really talk about how to psychologically figure out if you are even are trans or if you're just misguided because a lot of people are misguided. But I should probably stop ranting about that. Let's see. So yeah, I want to be a Makote or Nelson, whatever works. That'd be great. I mean, because like, if I'm going to put this much effort into like modifying myself, well, I might as well just work on like brain computer interface and then you can just like have super like matrix virtual reality or something, you know? And so right now, I, the, I have the luxury of not thinking about uh, not having to transition anymore because I no longer have gender dysphoria. I, that was cured by my transition. And so now it's just like funsy kind of thinking of the future kind of thing. And sure, we all want to like improve ourselves, but is it really worth like going so far to improve yourself a little bit whenever you can just think about 40, 50 years down the line, just get something popped in your brain and then you can like connect to a computer and you can have the full experience of living as a virtual character. That'd be cool. So, um, cause, oh yeah, I guess that could be one thing. In the past five years of transition, I have, you know, in many ways, I have matured quite a bit, but I have also rediscovered my love for dreaming, daydreaming, and um, like imaginary friends and stuff like that. Because I've, I've, I've kind of realized that, you know what, a lot of that stuff that's seen as childish, it just works. Because real friends, I mean, don't get me wrong, I have very intricate, like, imagination, stuff like that. But, because um, I... I have imaginary friends that I do argue with and they're assholes and I don't like being with them. But that's all part of accurately role playing somebody in your head. <clears throat> and um, I think I've just kind of given into fantasy a little bit because why do anything great unless at, when you can just dream of doing things that are great. And I've kind of just been enjoying that more and more because It'd be nice just to escape into fantasy and not care too much about reality. Okay. So, I'm happy with how my transition went. At this point, it would be easier. Uh, you can tell more about my change than I can because I just don't think about it. Right now, I'm thinking about starting a company of making mallets and notepads. Um, let's see. Oak mallet notepad. Oh, I just realized I got the focusing all messed up on this. Oh, well. So it's an oak notepad. Just an idea. Something I'll sell. Oh, and I also have a, a cottonwood mallet that I'll, that I'll sell. But I'm struggling with the bandsaw and the heat and all that. I've kind of gotten a little burnt out, so I'm going to go back to playing Final Fantasy a lot more. I've been playing it a lot and I've been enjoying it. I just feel at home there. 
that's I guess that's another thing like why would I invest so much effort into this world when this isn't doesn't feel like it's my home this this body that I in, uh, that I um, occupy whilst in this world because in many ways whenever I play Final Fantasy the world kind of disappears and I am brought to that world just like whenever you're driving you, you don't you don't realize that you have the steering wheel you just like you live in that world of the road and so it really does feel like oh this is a different character than that character I feel whenever I'm living as that character in that world I'm a lot happier when I'm living as this character in this world I'm a bit apathetic about the world itself and unless I can change this world to be more like that world I just don't have any motivation but a lot of my all my motivation pretty much comes from taking this world and turning it into the world of Eorzea because well it's just it's nicer to make stuff like that to reality but it is a bit of a brute force method oh. some weird bugs in here I don't know oh and yeah a lot of people talk about the chest <laughs> A little bit of breast at like bra pads because I saw them at Walmart and I was like, well, why not? So some of it is growth, some of it is just a little bit of foam. I mean, let's be honest. But women do that too, so I'm fitting right in. Because I realized, you know what? A little like adding a like getting one of those little things that adds just a little bit. It helps my it helps my feeling of self so much that. Um, I'm not sure of the technology for breast implants. Uh, there's a lot of uh, medical issues that can arise from those and it's expensive. And if I'm going to bother with getting a surgery, I might as well just wait until I can get like my brain separated from my body. You know, like 50 years from now, I'm an old, I'm an old witch, an old hag that just like I don't care about my life. Well, less than I care about my life now. But I wouldn't mind risking a big surgery like that where like, okay, take my brain out of my head, put it into this like uh, brain case and have all these neuro neurotransmitters put into there or whatever and plug me into my new body of my own design. That'd be cool. But again, fantasy. I like fantasy. And my life is continually going back between hard reality and hard fantasy. Like I'll go from, to th from thinking about ways we can make ether and create a soul, an afterlife. Wasp. And, oh that's the same bug. Little green little beetle thing. Then, then, then I switch over to like the hard science of things that could actually be done. Well, I mean I'm, I'm still technically wondering if it could be possible to, to create etheric energy in the real world by, uh, via modifying subatomic particles. I haven't seen any way for it, but I'm keeping an eye out for that possibility because like what if we could just create our own subatomic particle that could create like automatically assemble and, and replicate complex structures. Well we could actually save our memories then in that field of energy. Be an interesting idea. But then I go from that super weird fantasy idea to hard reality, like like hard science fiction of like, okay, what kind of propellant storage system when you need to go to Mars or whatever. It's like that's like the engineering mind and that's a bit taxing to go into that because I find the real world a bit a bit taxing really. Like for instance whenever I look at a tree I wish it had a soul. I really do. Like it, it seems like it would make sense that, that a tree and a, a rock and a vine everything would have a soul to it. Some amount of life energy. But it doesn't. And so whenever I'm cutting down a tree I'm sad that it's ne I'm sad that I'm that I'm cutting down a tree, but then I realize it was never truly alive in the extent that I wished it was, which is even sadder because it it doesn't have a single entity. If you just it doesn't yeah, it's so fragile. Granted, if you had a life based on on ether, it'll be fragile as well. But again, I don't have anything to talk about transition. It's just ugh. It's all this other stuff that's in my head. And uh, so I'm happy that I was able to transition. 
hopefully not too late, but I think as far as transitions go, I was able to do a pretty good job. A lot of it comes down to just how I present myself because I'm a region, I'm a reasonable person and I'm not one of those, well, I mean, I, I transitioned and it actually was something I needed. It wasn't one of those people that's just like a, they get uh, like a modified drag queen or whatever. Things. They're a little weird. The hyper feminine is really off putting. And, um, it's obvious that they're just acting, I think. And then I have all these other people telling me I'm transphobic for my views. But they're like straight people that, that don't, I want to not straight, like I am straight technically because I do like guys. But, um, well, I only like Sarah Americk. All right, Sarah Americk Deborell. You're the only guy that I'm actually really attracted to, only person. Um, I don't know. Hopefully you guys can stop bugging me for an update now. And uh, maybe I can keep milking this because I'm sure a lot of people will click. Who knows? And um, I imagine though a lot of these ones in the future will just be not actually about transition. More just about my, my personal life. Which, the thing is, transition does not define my personality. Me being female, you know, like indicating that I'm of the female sex even if I even if my DNA didn't say I am whatever I I have all the uh, like output uh, output signals of female so pe people call me female I accept that I'm female and uh, you know like you are what people say you are and like if you're an asshole and you don't think you're an asshole but everyone else says you're an asshole you're probably an asshole if you uh, if you don't think you're masculine but everyone thinks you're a guy you probably a guy, and maybe, and you can change that. But you guys don't want. But you can only change it in yourself. You can't change it in other people. And um, whoa, all the bugs that come in this place—it's kind of insane. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and um, thank you very much for watching. See ya. Oh, and yes, this is a 1967 electric typewriter and I like it I like it a lot it needs a little bit of work though because the motor takes a while to get going it has a it actually runs off a motor I never take one apart but it's like a, a trillion little pieces and so I don't think I'd ever want to get it back together so I'm probably not going to open it back up oh well